What's up, YouTube? This is probably going to be the last video I make um, about my rig, the Switch A10 rig. The water, it's water cooled, uh, just CPU and GPU. Um, in my last video that I made, I was talking about how with the new bay reservoir I, I put in here, it was a dual D5 alpha cool bay res. If you click the last video or the second to last video I made, uh, it goes over you know basically how I installed it because I am I am running both D5s on it. You can run it with one or two. I'm using two. But the only way to run, there's, there's two ways you can do this with this reservoir. You can either run uh, with a Y fitting and have both pumps, you know, ejecting the water through the Y fitting. And then, you know, you have that going to one tube and then you run it just like you normally would with the loop. Or you can run each pump through its own set of blocks and then you can have both loops come back into the reservoir. Now, I originally did this, if you check that video I'm referring to, the second, second to last video I put up, uh, I had the Y fitting, I was just running it all through one loop, and it just didn't look very, very nice at all. And I'm of the opinion that when you get in a water cool, first of all, you want to get a case that you're going to be able to put everything in and have it look nice. And then also, you obviously want to have a window so you can look at everything, because water cooling is not cheap. And if you're going to spend all that money, you might as well have your system look really nice so that's why I think of it <clears throat> but so anyway I did the Y fitting and it just it looked I mean you could check that video for yourself uh, you might think it looks nice but I didn't I didn't like the way it looked um, so that's one way you can run this this bay reservoir or you can actually like I said before you can run each pump through its own set of blocks uh, it does use up more tubing but if you look at this, my, my chair squeaks, so I apologize for that, but it actually looks like I'm using less tubing than the other video, but uh, that's because I actually did a, a better job of running a lot of the tubing around the back of the motherboard tray, and I also changed the tubing color that's going around the back to black. So if you look at the bottom rad, which is a 240 mil rad, you can't even see, you can only see one, one white piece of tubing going in, but you can't really see the other piece. I'll turn the light on the camera. You can see it right there. It's going through the back and then up and around. And then here's where everything comes in and out of the res. Uh, I've got some fifth power triple rotary fittings, some extension fittings, uh, excess PC compression fittings, and monsoon compression fittings uh, going in and out of this. But also, when you run each pump, you know, on its own to, to its own pieces of equipment to its in, to its own hardware, uh, you're you're using both outputs of the bay res and both inputs. Now, if you check the other video, when I was just using you know the Y fitting and then having it come back into the bay res with one tube, there really wasn't a lot of water pressure going into the bay res. But now, if you look. <laughs> I mean, it's like a torrent. I mean, look at this. I mean, it is just like, I'm going to turn the light off. Let's see if you can see it. The top, uh, well, first of all, you're going to notice the middle of the bay res is back towards the middle. Is the actual, um, the inlets to the pumps. So both pumps draw the water through that, that black hole. Then you see the two copper pieces inside. Those are where the each pump inlets, so they're pushing water back into the bay res uh, through those two copper pieces. And if you look, uh, you can kind of tell. Yeah, there's a, they're like a a star pattern of uh, they're perforated. So when the water comes back into the res, it kind of disperses the water in all directions, uh, which I guess helps with the bleeding it because when it's pushing air back into the bay res, it's going to come into smaller bubbles and not just one big bubble, but, <clears throat> but yeah, I think it looks pretty cool, um, especially now that I've got both run both pumps running on their, their own uh, clocks, that it just seems to have a lot more pressure, and also if you look at my last video that I did, 
I was having an issue with one of the pumps not spinning up to full speed with the Y fitting. Well, now that I'm not using the Y fitting anymore, uh, I'm not having that issue anymore. So, yeah, whatever, for whatever reason, it, it works perfectly fine now. But So basically what I'm doing is one pump just goes to the CPU, as you can see right here, uh, in the CPU, and then it goes up to the, the RX360 in the roof. I am doing push-pull. The bottom set of fans are uh, just Gentle Typhoon AP-15s. The top set of fans, I'll go ahead and take this off so you can see better. <clears throat> the top fans are the, just the XSPC, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, uh, 1650 RPM fans. These are like six bucks, six to seven dollar fans. But there's a guy on YouTube, he does his computer hardware videos too, his uh, YouTube name is Juggalo. He actually did a, a straight comparison of these fans to the AP-15s. As most people know, the AP-15s are like $20 a piece. I got mine for $18 a piece on Amazon, but he did a direct comparison of these fans to the AP-15s. And performance-wise, like if you actually compare the, the, the cooling performance, these are slightly better than the AP-15s in static pressure. And, you know, obviously that results uh, – to the better thermal performance of these, but the only thing, the only difference is these are sleeve bearing fans, so they are a little bit louder than the uh, AP-15s, and they don't look as cool. You know, some people might spend twice as much or three times as much on a fan just because it looks better. And I will admit, I, that's that's why I bought the AP-15s and put them in the interior, um, because when you're looking in through the window, you're seeing the design of those fans, which I like a lot. Uh, let me turn this off. So anyway, those are the uh, the fan arrangement on the RX 360 up, up top. Let's see, and then the bottom rad is the uh, the Alpha Cool UT60. It's a two. I got the 240 mil version in the bottom. Uh, it's the only length radiator you can actually put in the bottom of this case if you're running a 200 millimeter power supply, which I am. Uh, it's the AX or the uh, HX 1000. I wish I had the HX1200, but I don't. Uh, so anyway, that's the GPU loop. So I have the second pump going into the GPU, 7970. Uh, I have it overclocked to 1225 on the GPU, 1225 on the GPU, and then 1800 on the memory, which from what I've seen is actually a pretty good overclock for the memory, uh, going down into that 240 rad, and then out the back, and then back up to the bay rise up here. The uh, RX360 actually, I don't know if you can see it, this front fitting on this side is actually the outlet uh, going out also through the back of the case uh, behind the uh, side panel. And then they, the bottom rad and the top rad both come back in up here through this grommet and then back into the bay res. But I'm going to scoot back a little bit so you can see this in a better shot. I think this looks so much better than it did before with the Y fitting. I mean, I just, I really like this. The uh, fan controller is a Scythe Kaze Q12. I, I do have a, a Kaze, uh, the four, four channel with the LCD <clears throat> shows the uh, fan RPMs and the temperatures if you want to use the temperature sensors. But I have 13 fans in here that I know of. Yeah, 13, I think. Um, so I have one just going to a Molex. This NZXT fan right here just goes to a Molex, so it's running at 12 volts. Uh, the rest of the fans are running at about 30%. So, I mean, you can't, you can tell, I mean, I don't know if the camera's going to pick up the audio right. I know this camera, my phone doesn't really pick up the audio very well, but this thing is really, really silent. Uh, also, yeah, the fans I'm using on the bottom rad are just four of the XSPC 1650 RPM fans. Uh, the NZXT fan there, and then I have one in here. These 
these are uh, the 140 mil NZXT uh, performance fans. These things actually are loud. Um, I have these running at about half speed. I'm going to turn them to max right now just so you can s hear the difference. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. But Hopefully my phone's picking up the sound, but I'm going to turn it back down. I mean, really, the only noise you hear from this Everything's going, and I, I usually run those two fans at just like 25%. Uh, once blowing air in from the back into the radiator, which, yeah, I could have it exhausting and just having uh, the air go straight through the case from the front to back, but I actually thought that since the top rad is pulling warm air from the bottom rad, it would be nice to actually bring in some cold air through that rad as well, so to kind of get a little bit cooler thermals <coughs> going through the rad, but... It's probably not really a big difference, whichever way you do it. But anyway, yeah, those are the 140 mil NZXT uh, fans. You can actually set up, they have a separate cable coming off that you can select low, medium, or high speed. Um, I have them set to high, and then I just adjust them with the fan controller. So if I have it maxed out, you hear how loud they are. But I have that option to do that. But uh, I did have some leaks. I mean, I've never had leaks before. <laughs> tore down the uh, old tubing with the Y fitting and I put all this new stuff in. Just, I mean, if you can tell <laughs> the angles of those fittings coming out of there, I mean, it looks crazy, obviously. I'm kind of glad that you can hardly see it if you're just kind of looking in right here. You'd have to, like, peek in up there to see how it looks. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's just busy. But uh, it was really hard to tighten those down because you can barely get your fingers in there to, to tighten everything down once it's once you start adding more tubes, there's four, you know, obviously four uh, all together, two inlet, two outlet, but, yeah. But, yeah, I like, I like the way it looks. Hopefully, I won't have to mess with this thing anymore. Um, I might get some more 30 or 45 degree fittings, uh, one for the bottom of my video card, the uh, outlet. I might get a 45 there just to make it look nicer. But, I mean, it looks good the way it is. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna get one more shot back here. I have this on a uh, Antec land board, and uh, that was a a situation. Right there. Uh, basically, I was going to a land, and it was a pretty important land because a friend of mine is moving away, and uh, it was a, I had it all planned out for a couple months to go to this land, and it's kind of like a, a, a going away party for him. I even bought him or pitched him for a birthday present and everything. But long story short, the uh, the straps that come with the land board, the buckles just gave out when I tried to lift up my rig. This rig is this rig isn't that heavy. I mean, it's obviously heavier than a if I was just doing air cooling, but the buckle snapped. It didn't break, it just gave out. Like, it just unsnapped itself. And fortunately, it snapped as I was lifting up the lifting up the rig, so it didn't even, it didn't even get off the floor. It just snapped. So, uh, I bought the, I bought it on Newegg, and I posted the review, and I gave it one star. I was like, you know, this thing ruined my weekend, basically. You know, I, I could have, I could have still went to the lane and not brought my, brought my rig, um, or I could have tried to, you know, physically lift it up and put it in my car, but I didn't want to risk dropping it down the stairs and all that. So I just, I found something else to do that day, and I told everybody I wasn't going to be there, but posted a review on New Egg saying what happened. And Antec actually resp responded to it, saying to contact them, and they would do whatever. I don't, they didn't say exactly what they would do. They said they would help me, but so I emailed the email address that he gave me um, as his response three times, and they have yet to they have yet to contact me. So I don't know if it's just someone they put on there to uh, give them a better image to make it appear as though that they're helping customers out when they have problems, or uh, if 
they're just not getting my emails. I don't know what the problem is, but yeah, it's a separate issue. But I mean, it sucks too because this thing, this thing is so cool. I mean, you can put your rig on it. Instead of having to install casters, you can just set it on top of this little board. got a lot of uh, open space on the bottom so when, if you have intake fans like I do next to the radiator the air can still get through without there being anything blocking the path of the air so but anyway this video is already about 16 minutes so I'm going to end it there so yeah let me know what you guys think later